Welcome to Victory Life Today with Al and Angie Burke. A place to connect, to grow, and to cultivate your faith in Christ. Together, we'll learn how to stand in victory each and every day. Live a life set ablaze by faith, filled with purpose. Live life above your circumstance. Welcome to Victory Life Today. I'm Al Burke. And I'm Angie Burke. Thanks so much for joining us today. We are talking about the armor of God. We are talking about Christians putting on God's armor every single day because we always have uh, the devil just combating us and trying to get us distracted off of what God has called us to do. So the title of this series is Equipped because we are equipped with, and you need to know that you are equipped for battle. Okay, and it's not that it's a 24-7 battle, but, you know, things come up and you say, wait, this is not right. I don't want this in my life, like sickness or disease or anything. And you know it doesn't line up with the Word of God. Well, you have the armor of God on you to fight and you need to use it because a lot of times we just know it. We can memorize the armor. We can read about it, but we don't put it on. So you need to put on your armor, and it is God's armor you are putting on. So uh, we are equipped, Al. You know, if you don't understand that you're in a war, you will never understand Christianity. It's impossible. And this has been a problem I've seen in the church for years. It's like the devil doesn't exist. And so they blame God for everything, good or bad. It's like God does everything. He's in control, and that's it. There is no devil. But what they don't understand is, we're in a war. Why would you would God equip us with these weapons if you're not in a war? Right. You don't right. need them. You need them. I'm not going to need this equipment when I'm in heaven. Right. Right. So That's he's good. given us this equipment and he's trying we're trying to teach you how to use this equipment against the wilds That's of the right. evil one. And That's I remember right. the day I stood up. I mean after I got saved a while after and I understood this. <laughs> More like the devil was beating on me, but I understood what, what was going on. And I stood up and said this, I am going to have everything Jesus died to give me. Yeah. The war was on. Yeah, you said that. The war was on. He, the devil can't stop you from getting saved. He could try, but he can't stop you from getting right. saved. Once you get saved, he tries to stop you from ever doing anything with your Christian life. That's right. He tries to immobile you immobilize you and destroy your destiny. That's when he comes steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to destroy yeah. whatever he can. He wants to destroy your destiny. Right. You're going to need these tools, this equipment, to fulfill your destiny because you have someone fighting you all the time. That's right. Now, <clears throat> granted, the devil has thousands of years of experience on how to destroy you, and he's up. 24-7, while you're sleeping, he's plotting your demise, but we have the Holy Spirit. Right. And he can't fight the Holy Spirit. That's right. We have wisdom of God. We don't need any more. We really don't need any more than the wisdom God's given us by the power of the Holy Spirit wow. to walk in that understanding. We were just talking about how, we, you know, motivational speakers, I'm good with motivation. I'm good with motivational speakers. But make sure what you're motivated at is what God told you to do. Ah, uh, yes, absolutely. You know, I have a friend of mine who has a church, a big church. God told him, do a church, build a church. He told us to do a TV show. If we were doing his thing and he was doing our thing, there'd be failure. We're equipped to take the devil out and wipe him out. But we use it to fulfill our destiny and to have a victorious life here. That's right. Too Amen. many Christians are the poor, broke, miserable, sick, and unhappy going to church on Sunday. And then they say to their neighbor, do you want to go to church with me? And no, thanks. I have enough problems. <laughs> That's right. That's I don't need right. your problems on top right. of my problems. Right. And they don't understand. It's a witness to the world when you're overcoming. Absolutely. Through the equipment that we have, we're overcoming all of this. You know, you know, in the scripture where Paul said to, to the Lord, I asked the Lord three times to take away this thorn in the flesh. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you. What he was saying was, I've empowered you. I've given you equipment, Paul. Use it. Just right. use it. Right. 
The Lord said this to me one day. Most Christians are trying to get me to do something I told them to do. Or they're trying to get me to give them something they already have. We already have this equipment. Yes. We yes. have the helmet of yes. salvation. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We already have this stuff. Right. Pick it up. That's right. You know? That's right. And That's use good. it. That's good. Well, today we are going to continue with the armor of God and we're talking about the helmet of salvation, which I know that you love too. Now I'm going to read the entire scripture of the armor of God so you get the fullness of it at this point. Ephesians 6, 13 to 17, and this is the Amplified Bible. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God. That means the entire, all of them all of the pieces, so that you so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. And having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth around your waist and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, which is an upright heart, and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability in the readiness produced by the good news. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation. You know, right from the beginning, you said resist. The scripture says resist and stand your ground in the or in in a evil day that may come. (coughs) You have to do it. Yep. It says you stand your ground. You resist. That means you need to tell people off sometimes and tell them, and quit being so yeah. lovey-dovey and tell them, look, I'm not going there. I'm not doing this. But it might not be a one-time <laughs> thing. Standing your ground may take a long time and once, until you see what you and want. And once you defeat the devil in that one, there could be another. And then right. coming down the road, there's another right. one. I'm standing my ground. I've got the helmet of salvation That's on me good. now. And... Um, <clears throat> Too many people are praying and get trying to get God to resist. And he said, you do it. That's right. You resist. I'm giving you, I'm equipped you with the helmet of salvation. So when we say salvation, though, here, we're not necessarily talking about the born again experience, although becoming born again, that's what you get out of that salvation. But salvation here is talking about getting out of anything the devil tries to bring against you. You know, have you ever heard somebody say, uh, that was my saving grace or this is my saving grace? That means it's when a good thing saves a negative experience yeah. and override. So yeah. take any negative experience in life and wearing the helmet of salvation is this. It's protecting your mind from thinking the opposite of what God says. Okay, it's a protection mechanism. Protecting your mind with God's word. This is your saving grace because anything that goes in the mind uh, if we keep it there long enough, it'll go through our body and in our life. So the way you think about an experience or a trial or anything that you're facing is probably the way it's going to go. Okay, so that's really important. And I've said this before, but I want to say it again. Your mind is the devil's playground. And I really think I first heard this years ago from Joyce Meyer. I really think I did. Uh, I'm not sure, but... When when you go to re- when the kids go to recess, I did it. I was in after school activities and everything. I would take them out to recess. These kids, they were not who they were in the classroom. They decided, okay, I'm going to be the princess. I'm going to be the Cowboys. your prince. I'm going to be. They were pretending. Now, they weren't really those people. They were just pretending and they were having a great time. But this is what the enemy does. Something comes against you, and then the enemy right away goes to the playground and has some recess. And he starts pretending, and he starts putting things in your mind that are simply not true. He begins to really fake or actually lie. Okay? He begins to lie. lie. Absolutely. Like when you get a symptom, he'll say you're sick. Right. Right? And he tells you it's going to be worse. Oh, yes. And not only are you sick, you're going to die. And it's fatal, and or you're going to have to live with this forever. He is pretending with you. 
You know, the whole thing there, you know, like your mind is the devil's playground. Don't let him play. The minute you see the devil begins to be bringing all that kind of thinking you were just talking about, you're sick, you're going to be sick. This is what I would tell you to do. Put on some worship music and just spend some time worshiping God. And it gets him out of there. You know, don't, in, in other words, what we do is we respond. Right. And now you're done. You know how, what I do? I go, and this is what I say out loud. Recess is over. Oh, cool. Enough That's is great. enough. Recess is over. You had your little fling here. Now get out. You know, let's look at John 8, 44. This is what, this is what Jesus was telling the people who would not believe in him, but We'll get to the end of it and you'll see. You are of your father, the devil, and it is your will to practice the desires which are characteristic of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks what is natural to him, for he is a liar and the father of lies and half-truths. Oh, and that's then on the half-truths of the worth. Yeah, that's awesome. That's good half truths because people don't think that people think that's that's well, okay. It's it's okay, and you know what else? Like someone will be preaching and it'll all be dead right on the money, and then they'll drop in something that's not biblical, and then they go back. It's like a half truth or yes. quarter or, or yeah. three quarters truth and a quarter, and it's disguised mm -hmm. because of all of the. Yes. You know, the devil comes as an angel of light only to deceive, and he'll come and he'll quote scripture to you. And he'll say, that's a really good thing. And meanwhile, he's leading you down a path of destruction. And you don't wow. even know it. Wow. That's <clears throat> and good. Uh, the half-truths is a real problem. So the mind is where the devil tries to intimidate you. That's right. And he tries to get you into unbelief. And it doesn't, just because you operate in unbelief and you're intimidated and the devil's destroyed your life, it doesn't mean you're not going to heaven. If you're born again and you've given your life to Christ, no matter how bad, no matter what, you're going to heaven. You, your, your performance doesn't, or should I say, your goodness doesn't get you into heaven and your badness doesn't keep you out. But the devil wants to steal your destiny, the purpose and the plan and the reason why you were put on earth. And I know so many Christians that are doing nothing with their lives. They know things. They're just defeated. Because the devil got into their mind and they didn't put on the helmet of salvation and say, no, this is what I'm doing. And uh, he, hmm. he took him out or is taking him out. Yeah. He tries to tell you God's word's not true. Right. You know, he, what did he do with Eve? He goes, come on, talk real. Do you really think, you know what I mean? Right. You really, right. come on. It come didn't on, take you know much for I mean? her. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so. When something negative comes along, you must immediately convert or think about what God has said about the situation. That's part of protecting your mind. Yes. And I think the helmet of salvation is very, very, you could say it's the most important one, but I don't know that I wouldn't say that, but because it all starts in your mind. That's where you fail. That's right. That's right. That's where you go, because that's where the baby. enemy is lying to you. And he goes, oh, you're a poor baby. You know, God is hard on you and he's mean. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. And you just sort of drop out. Why would you do that, Lord? And now we're blaming him. Now, oh, well, that's the ultimate thing. The devil does these things to you. And then he says, God did this. Right. Or God right. did this to you. And that's the ultimate deception. Right. Right. And most of the church is bought into that. Well, you know, I have a, uh, I have a, I know that you have another idea on this helmet of salvation, which actually is simple and true. And just share it because I, I, I kind of like what you say about that to you personally, what the helmet of salvation is. It, well, the helmet of salvation means I'm saved no matter well, what. Well, that's another thing. But the helmet of salvation we were just saying is, is always keep your mind on what God says. And, but this is another angle, but it's also true. It's thinking and meditating on the fact that I don't care what you bring again. I'm going to heaven. I'm saved. Well, this I mean, is you, major. you live like that. I know it is. This is major. You know, like we talked about, I had that, you know, a car that got all smashed up and everything, the 52 pickup. And the guy was all upset. And I said, look, it's a piece of metal. 
At the end of the day, it's a piece wow, of metal. I totally shut the devil down. You did. You he did. thought he was going to get me on this one. Most people would think God did it to him, but I knew God didn't do it. The right. devil tried to wreck the truck, right. and he did. And then he was probably like, oh, isn't that terrible? Oh, that's terrible. And the devil will work whatever angle you, wherever you fall. If you might say, well, God, this is me. Yeah. And if you say God didn't do it to me, um, the world, whatever, did this to the, He'd say, oh, you love that thing. This is not right. Yeah. And yeah. he wants to get you into offense and strife. And then the confusion begins. When I see people with confusion, there's strife somewhere. Yes. Well, There's that's what envy the somewhere. Said. Absolutely. He would try to get you into envy. Look at that beautiful thing. It's all red. I have to tell you that someday we're going to tell you the whole story, but not, not in this um, uh, broadcast. But, um, but Al went over and above doing this God's way, blessing the man that was driving the car a, a, a million times over. Not necessary. Didn't have to do it, but he knew how to treat uh, this person and how God would run the tree. And in the end, I just want to tell you, Al is going to get a truck 10 times better than it was when he purchased it. For free. Because Al's reaction was godly. You shut the devil down. Right. And then it's like, oh, that's not working. And, and he, in your mind, it could you could have spun out of control. You could have well, said, easy. What? Right. Easy just to go somewhere with that. And the devil waits to see where he drops things in your mind and sees which one you're going to bite. Right. And then when you say, well, this is what happened, and then you go, and then he works it. Right. And he works you right into the ground until you're like a destroyed individual or you're miserable, depressed, very unhappy. Right. You know, I've seen this, um, and I understand, I've seen this with people with their children. The children begin to go wayward. They begin to go off the track. And they're Christian people, Christian family, and the child begins to go up, and they're all upset. Their life is destroyed yeah. because they don't see God's result immediately. And I said, look, don't worry about this. Just pray for them and believe God. He's going to bring them back. Sometimes they need to get, they need to see things for themselves. Right, right. So keep the helmet on. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. And my house is saved with me. Those kids will be in heaven. They may not do too well with it here. <clears throat> Does it matter? That's their life. Don't try. And we try to live our life through them. But here's, here's the big thing. I've seen people's lives destroyed over what their children are doing. Oh, God, yes. And it's easy. I mean, you love your children, right? And the children are going the wrong way. And your life is destroyed. And you don't do anything God told you to do. And I could see them dying and standing before the Lord. And the Lord says, why didn't you do what I told you to do? Oh, my kids were this and my kids were that. And God would just say, I was taking care of your kids. All right, that's just Not a lack only of that, trust. Yeah. You're here and they're still on the earth. You think I won't take care of them? Oh, that's good. Yeah. And we just don't believe God's good because we don't see what we want to see now. Yeah. Yeah. And you, sometimes good. you got to let them get their nose bloody. And uh, God knows so how to do those things. just focusing on your salvation should be enough to get us through anything, really. really. Because that's really the most important thing. Right. Wow. It really is the most important. You're talking and, and about it, and, it, and, it, and it, When you focus on that and stuff like that, you're going to heaven, it builds you up. It doesn't it tear you, you down. Right. And it gets you hopeful. Yes. You're now hopeful. Right. You know? Oh, wow. You know. And just think about the fact that God loves you. That's another thing. That's another. That's thing. another thing. This helmet of salvation. Focus on that. Well, you know, that's another thing the devil does. He goes, "Well, if God really loved you, this wouldn't happen." Uh, right. I hate the devil. Right. Yes. And it's then true. what happens is, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And really, the devil did it to you because you let him, and then he blamed God, and you, he's taking you. You know, the level of deception on the church to me yeah. when I was yeah. involved in those mainline churches. They didn't know anything. And what they did know for the most part was wrong. They did understand salvation, and I'll give them credit for that. But after that, most of what they taught was backwards. Yeah. You know, they would teach you, go get them, get a good lawyer. <laughs> yeah. And, and I just walk away and give it to God, and I make 10 times the money on everything I do. I can't, I can't help but make money. Right. Because right. I do it God's way, and he wants me to be 
wealthy and he wants to be prosperous. I put that in my brain. That's part of the helmet of salvation. My thinking is God wants good for me. That's right. And I will have it. If something goes wrong and something goes down, I go, it's temporary. Right. That's all. So the helmet of salvation is there for you. I mean, you have it and put it on. But it's going to be no use to you if you just let your mind wander here, there, and everywhere because it can. Okay? There's no limits to where our mind, that's right, our thinking can go. You have got to think spiritually. And I'm going to read this to you, and this is how important it is. Romans 8, 6 says, to be carnally minded is death. So if you're just thinking up here, carnally, apart from what God might be saying, it's going to bring death and destruction. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I mean, those words, life and peace, is is so awesome, you know, because our thoughts can actually be dangerous. Well, you know, it's exactly what I was talking about. You're carnally minded. If you're just thinking about the here and the now and what you see in the natural realm. Right and your kids are going bad, you're not going to have peace in life. You're going to be miserable. But when you're spiritually minded, God's going to take care of my children. He's going to bring them into the kingdom of God. My children are blessed and going. That's right. Then you start getting happy. That's right. So you need to protect your mind from wrong thinking. It's an on-purpose thing when you need to replace it with right thinking. You know, you just can't take something away from someone and not replace it because they're going to go get that thing. You know, I remember our daughter Karen, she had a CD that I, and she was in middle school and the neighbor said, you know, Karen has a CD, by the way, because her, her kids play with my kids and she told me who it was. Real evil person. And I said, thank you. And I went into her drawer while she was in school, opened it up and sitting right there. I took it and I broke it in half, put it back, closed the drawer, never heard another thing from her again. (laughs) But really, the point is, I shouldn't have expected, and she lived in a house of worship anyway. She lived in a home where we did worship the Lord. But you can't expect to take bad music away from your kids unless they replace it with the good music because they're going to go right back to what they know and what they're used to. And it could be really evil. You know, the Lord told me one day, do not ever let your mind run wild. Right. And what that means is don't just sort of be driving down the road thinking about whatever comes into your head, thinking about this, that, thinking about whatever you're just thinking about everything and you're overthinking everything. And the Lord said, do not let your mind run run wild, control what you think about. Uh, very good. The minute I start thinking about something that's not right, I said, no, I'm not thinking about that. I'm going to think about something else. I think about the goodness of God. I'm going to think about I'm saved. I have salvation. That's right. The helmet of that's salvation. Right. I have all this going for me. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. You can control what you think. Don't, th- you know, some people say, well, I, I love this one that Scott did. The guy said, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm so depressed. I can't think of anything good. I'm, yeah. yeah. And he said, well, let me ask you something. If I gave you a million dollars, could you not be depressed for 10 minutes? He goes, yeah, I could. <laughs> so you don't have to be depressed. How about I give you a million dollars if you can not be depressed for a day and then two days? So the point is, he was the man who said, I'm depressed and can't. He's deceived. Right. You can change right. the way you think. I, I think most people don't want to take the responsibility because that's another thing. But anyway, I remember when Al broke his hip uh, and I was in the hospital with him and I was he had just been admitted. And I did not call everyone and anyone I knew because I know better than that. I called just a couple of select friends that I knew who were mature in the Lord and they would give me the right counsel, not that we were doing anything wrong because we hit it on from the very beginning. We did this thing right, okay? And one thing she said, I was explaining to her what happened and I told her just, you know, keep in prayer and believe with us that everything's gonna be fine. And she said to me, her last words, I'll never forget, Stay single-minded. And I knew exactly what she meant, Al. Stay single-minded on what? On his broken hip? No, on the Word of God. Stay single-minded, like picture a narrow road. And your mind goes over here, you bring it right back. If it goes over here, you bring it right back. Stay single-minded on what the Word of God says. You know, when I... um... It was awesome. When I fell, and we talked about this before, and hit the deck, the pain was, you don't know what pain is. I was screaming, I am healed, I am healed, single-minded. I already am healed. Right. And I remember they said it would be probably eight months to a year before you walk normal, you Mm -hmm. know. And um, 
I remember picking up the phone and calling the doctor for an appointment yeah. five weeks after the date of injury. And they said eight months. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> well, make a long story short. Well, I'm going right to make it real short. <laughs> but I'm going to make it real short. But anyway, I would not change my right. mind. And I remember, like, it's easy. To, it's it easy is. It is. to just sort of fall apart. That's right. It's and easy. we rejected all the reports. We rejected we, everything. It's a good story, and we'll get it to you again one day. But uh, we encourage you to go to VictoryLifeMinistries.org. And we have a ton of resources there that can really, really help you live a life of victory. And once you live that life of victory, others will see it, and they'll say, what's your secret? And you'll just say, it's Jesus. So it's Amen. a great witness to live, and we actually live what we preach. So go to VictoryLifeMinistries.org and check out our resources and be blessed by them. And you know, we want to thank you for joining us. We really do. We appreciate you watching us every day. And remember, victory is always yours through Jesus Christ. And we'll see you next time. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the program today. Thanks so much for joining us. We have a book bundle package just for you. The first book is God's Not Mad at You. And Al, you're really, really you know, strong on this one, aren't you? When you get a revelation that God's not mad at you, in fact, he thinks you're the greatest, he's well pleased with you at all times, it frees you to be what God has called you to be in this life. And you can be a servant of the Most High God and be a blessing to others all around you. This is an important book and it's part of this great bundle. Absolutely. The second one we have is No More Regret, No More Fear. God told me a long time ago that my children live in the regrets of the past and the what ifs of the future. You know what? And in light of how much God loves me, there's no time to have regret. That's right. God Al. is just, That's right. he's just moving on. That's it's exactly awesome. right. We shouldn't look back and we shouldn't fear the future. I'm not looking back. I'm just looking ahead for the good things that God has for me. That's right. And the last one is get rid of that anxiety with God right by your side. You do not have to fight anxiety by yourself, right? No, this is a great book and there's a lot of great information in here. It, it's just freeing and you'll just walk in peace. Yeah, and you'll this. learn and you'll learn to be free from it rather than just coping with anxiety. Right. There's no coping with God. You're free, and that's the way he made us through Jesus. Yes, and these go hand in hand, so please go to victorylifeministries.org and get your bundle today. Victory Life Ministries was founded to help you connect, grow, and flourish in a relationship with Jesus. Al and Angie Burke are committed to teaching the body of Christ how to walk in strength, in boldness, in love. Connect with us online today at VictoryLifeMinistries.org. You'll find the encouragement, inspiration, and resources you need to stand in victory each and every day. Join in on a growing community of believers that are partnering to bring these messages all over the world. With your help, we can make a change. We can shift the atmosphere. Live your best life. Live an effective life full of faith, hope, and vision. Live life above your circumstance.